Hey guys, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 45 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly show, I share with you all the games we played last week and do a spotlight on one of them, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. If you're new here, none of my content is sponsored, which gives us the freedom to play whatever we want, show you what we're playing, and give our unbiased opinion on it. I also do monthly giveaways, so if you like board games as much as I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content. This week's spotlight is on a game, Azul. This was recently nominated for the Board Game of the Year Award, the Spiel des Jahres. It is for two to four players ages eight and up and plays in 30 to 45 minutes. I did a mini spotlight on Azul a couple months ago, but I'm gonna do a full spotlight this time, including some commentary afterwards. In Azul, everyone is tiling a beautiful wall in Portugal. Each person has their own player board that they are filling up with these tiles. The five x five grid has five of each colored tile, one in each row and one in each column. In the middle of the table, factories are producing the tiles. You randomly draw four tiles from the bag and place them in the factories at the beginning of each round. On your turn, you take all of one colored tile either from a factory or from the middle of the table. If you take from a factory, you put the rest of the tiles in the middle of the table. You place the tiles you acquired on one row on the left-hand side of your board. If you can't fit them on a row or you have some left over, the tiles fall onto the floor and will be negative at the end of the round. The first player to take tiles from the middle of the table also takes the first player marker and places it on the bottom row. They will get at least negative one, but they will also get to go first next round. Once all the tiles are gone, everyone scores for the current round. For any slots on the left that are completely full, you move the rightmost tile over to its matching slot on the right, going from top to bottom. The leftover tiles are placed aside and will go back into the bag once the bag runs out of tiles. A tile by itself is one point. If the tile adds to either a horizontal or vertical row, it scores for the rest of the row also. For example, this would be three points. If the tile adds to a horizontal and vertical at the same time, you score both. For example, this would be eight points, three for the horizontal and five for the vertical. Tiles on the left side that didn't fill up a row are carried over to the next round. When you take tiles, you cannot place them on the left if you already have that colored tile on the right, since there's only one spot for each colored tile in each row. When one player has completed an entire horizontal row, you finish the current round and do final scoring. There are three endgame bonuses, two points for each completed horizontal row, seven points for each completed vertical row, and 10 points for each set of five colored tiles that you have on your board. The player with the most points wins the game. There's a variant on the back side where the tiles are not predetermined, but the same rule of one tile per row and column still applies. This gives you the freedom to arrange the tiles as you go, but you can also tile yourself into a corner if you're not careful. Allison's joining us again this week. Thanks for coming on, Allison. What did you think of Azul? I think Azul is moderately fun. It recently <laughs> got nominated for the board game of the year. King Domino won it last year. How would you compare it to King Domino? Um, I like King Domino better. I think one reason I haven't fallen in love with this game yet is because I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I'm so bad at this game. If I were like slaying it, like beating everybody, then I'd probably love it. <laughs> so you have what, two plays now? Uh, I think I've played three, three times. I've played five. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface on trying to figure out how the game works. It goes a lot deeper than it seems and, and as far as strategy. That's one thing I like about it. There's so many different strategies that you can try out. I think this game is gonna be one that grows on me the more I play it. It's a puzzle trying to figure it out and figuring out which pieces to grab and where to put them and what's gonna give you the most points. I think that's what I have the hardest time with is setting it up so that I can get the maximum amount of points. Any negatives about the game? Honestly, no. Like I think the game's done well. And I think initially, just because I'm so bad at this game, it's not like right out of the gate one of my favorites, but I could see it becoming one of my favorites if I like figured out a better strategy. <laughs> I have two negatives about the game. One is the first player tile. If you can see, I fashioned one out of cardboard. We accidentally threw it away. It was in the punch outs with these in the bottom corner and we didn't notice. And apparently that's pretty common. I read online a lot of people throw it away. I contacted Plan B Games and have not received a replacement yet. Apparently in future versions, they're gonna print an actual resin tile for the first player marker, which would be really cool. They should have done this from the beginning, I think. One more negative that I had is sometimes in the middle, at the end of a round, there will be a whole bunch that somebody gets stuck with. I don't like that you don't have control over that sometimes. 
but I feel like you do have control over it. If you're trying to think ahead and looking at what's being pushed into the middle, as soon as one color starts piling up, you could grab them so that it, and fill you know four or five so you don't get stuck with seven at the end. That's true. Maybe we just need some more plays to get better at it. One game, I got stuck with seven in one round and it filled up the bottom. It was negative 14 and I was not a happy camper. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, like that aspect of the game that you're describing does, like it is pretty crappy, but I feel like that that is part of the built-in strategy of the game. That's fair. That's fair. Overall, I really enjoy the game. Would you say thumbs up, thumbs down? I would give this one a thumbs up for sure. <laughs> Plus, the pieces look like Starburst, so I want to eat them the whole time they we're do. playing. Wait, ready? <sighs> cut that out. Like, cut it out of the video. Just don't. Was that stupid? It was so bad. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming on today, Allison. Anytime. Thanks for having me. The next game we played this week is Were Beasts. I did an unboxing of this a couple weeks ago on my channel. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. Travis and I had a lot of fun doing that. Were Beasts is for three to 10 players ages eight and up and plays in 15 minutes. It's a light, short filler game. And we played this all the way up to the max player count of 10. It is a set collection game with secret identities. So you're trying to collect certain cards but people don't know what you're collecting. But if you're too obvious about what you're collecting, people can call you out and then you're out of the game. But if they're wrong, they're out of the game. Okay, it's a double Skeeto. Oh, I want it too. It's three, two, we're Nana, uh, we're Ghost. Okay, I need a werewolf. I think. I can go for a three person kill in one round. <laughs> I think I'm gonna accuse Brooke of having the were chow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go for Kinsey. I'm accusing Kinsey of having the wear in Hannah. The first night we played this, we played it four times. We liked it so much. I'll be doing a spotlight in this over the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. The next game we played is Wizard. Wizard is for three to six players, ages 10 and up, and plays in 45 minutes. This is a trick-taking game played with a standard deck of 52 cards with four jesters and four wizards thrown in. And those extra eight cards really mix the game up. You're bidding on how many tricks you think you can win and you gotta meet your bid exactly in order to get points. This game's been around since the 80s. It's an oldie but goodie. The next game we played is a Game of Thrones Hand of the King. This is for two to four players ages 14 and up I'm not sure why though, This is I would rate it eight and up, and plays in 15 to 30 minutes. In this game, you're moving the Varus card around a six by six grid of cards that have people from all the different houses, and you're trying to have the most influence in the most houses at the end of the game. Very lightweight game, plays in 15 minutes. If you're looking for something quick to play, this is a good one. I went to a work conference last week in San Francisco, and when I was done, the family flew up and met me, and we went into San Francisco for the weekend. We had a lot of fun doing touristy things, played a few board games in the hotel at night when we got back. Check it out. I'm just wrapping up a work conference. Allison and the kids flew up here last night. We are hitting San Francisco for the weekend. We got to San Francisco and Allison wanted to go to a staple in California. In and out. ride across the Golden Gate Bridge and are now at Pier 39 looking at the sea lions and then we're gonna grab some seafood for dinner. So I got the microphone out the other day and it does not fit into the phone with my case here. So I ordered this, had it shipped to our hotel in San Francisco, a lightning extension kit. This should be able to plug in here like this. Beautiful. And now the microphone plugs in like that. Oh, it's, it's like Inception. Hello. A vlog within a vlog. <laughs> I bet two. Two. 
So you both bid two. I'm going to bid zero. Six. I'm just kidding. I'll bid one. I'll take the. I'll take the last one. We're going to Alcatraz now. We're at a gift shop and I found this Escape from Alcatraz board game. I'm really thinking of getting it. Mild adult themes of prison escape. We are at the top of Vince Lombardi Street. This is the really crooked one. You can see the cars doing all the switchbacks there. Day two in San Francisco is in the books. We are playing Game of Thrones Hand of the King in the lobby at the hotel. I'm gonna move Varys down here and take Ares Targaryen which ties me with Travis, so I take his banner now from him. We're playing wizard again tonight, but this time we're using a variant where you write your bid down secretly. We are walking down the streets of San Francisco now. It is so hilly here. Check out the angle of the houses in comparison to the road. Ladies, which is a series of houses made famous by the intro to the TV show Full House. Where are we going next, Kinsey? We are going to an ice cream shop here in San Francisco that makes ice cream with liquid nitrogen. They turn it right in front of you, you order it, they make it, and then they give it to you. So I'm really excited. Sweet. What's it called? It's called Smitten Ice Cream. This ice cream is so good. It's so smooth. I got chocolate and it's definitely worth it. Check out this cool statue of a dad and his son playing checkers. We're now in Chinatown. The entrance of it is the grandiose Dragon's Gate. We're heading to the Fortune Cookie Company to check that out. Day three in San Francisco is almost in the books. We are hanging out in the lobby of the Marriott and everyone wants to play wizard again. We are at Mere Woods, just outside of San Francisco. The world's tallest trees, but not the widest around, but definitely the tallest. These things are very tall. Are they tall? They're really tall. After Mere Woods, we did a quick stop here at Sausalito across the bay from San Francisco. You can see San Francisco in the background. Last but not least, we played Secret Hitler this week. I've already talked a lot about Secret Hitler on my channel, so let's move on to the next segment, which is the news. Uh, Plan B Games announced a giant suitcase version of Azul for $300. That's crazy. Now, I wonder if this is a trend because last year's Spiel des Jahres winner, King Domino, was about a $20 game. It came out with a giant version that's four times larger than the original, and it was in the $40 to $50 range, which people freaked out about. This one is $300, so I'll be interested to see how many people actually buy this. That's too much for me to spend on one board game. I posted a picture this week while we were in San Francisco of our family in front of the Golden Gate Bridge and got the best comment ever. Meeples Unite, who some of you may remember, won the March giveaway of Jaipur and sent it to his friend in Australia since he already owned a copy. He left a comment that said, not the time for deep sea adventure. I laughed so hard at that comment. Deep Sea Adventure is a game we've really been enjoying lately about diving to the bottom of the sea, but most of the time you run out of air and die. So that was a pretty funny comment by Meeples Unite. 
And one non-related board game thing in the news. My favorite band, Weezer, just released a cover of Africa by Toto. I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out. It's pretty good. For the last segment here, I show any new purchases. Let's jump right in. Ah, this is the Rycote Windjammer windscreen. This goes on the little microphone that I showed you guys last week that I plug into my phone when I'm vlogging and it prevents the wind from blowing into it, making it all staticky sounding. I'll have to give this a try outside on a windy day. This is a DJI Osmo Mobile 2. This is a gimbal for your phone, so it holds it steady. This will be great when I'm taking shots of a game or doing my spotlight. I can zoom in on stuff, move it around the table without it being all shaky. The next thing is Osmo Mobile Base 2. It's just a little base that you can actually set this thing in like this. It's like a tripod kind of. I did mention I was saving most of my money up for equipment and so I've, I've held back on the board game purchases for the last little bit so I could afford some of this new equipment. Oh, this is just a little portable case for this so I can carry it around in. I showed you guys last week that I got my two dice towers in. They are now put together. This one is space, this one is defense, and they look awesome. In conjunction with my other two castle ones, we can now have a dice tower on each of the four corners when we're playing a game. And these things are awesome. They just roll right out on the table. Last week, I also showed you my Game Topper mat that was the incorrect size. I contacted Game Toppers, and in less than a week, a new one showed up at my door that is presumably the right size. Ooh, that looks nice. Wow, that looks really good. Kevin is amazing from Game Toppers. As I said earlier, none of my content sponsored. I just really love this product here. And this red one, I think will add some more variety to our gameplay and the videos I take. That is it for this week in board games. Subscribe for more board game videos. Thanks for everyone who subscribes. Don't forget to enter that giveaway and I will see you next time. Bye.